Hopping yep. into game three. Yeah, game three between Amazon Prime and Amazon Amazon. I gotta edit yeah, I gotta edit these. To this. I gotta edit these again now. No. <laughs> No. It, all comes, it all comes down to uh, Amazon Prime, of course, on the blue side again, versus Amazon Amazon on the red side. This is the match that will decide who goes to the finals here and gets to compete for their charity. All the marbles on the line. Who's going to get casted by the Riot uh, uh, Pro casters? Who's going to show up in the finals? Who's going to win what? this Amazon Civil War? Are we not casting? No. <laughs> And live, Desi Fresh oh. <laughs> has a bomb oh. drop. Yeah, no, uh, we're actually the finals are going to be cast by uh, some Riot Pro casters here. So these semifinals are the unfortunately last time you're going to hear from our wait, lovely wait, voices. Wait, no. yeah. wait, I, wait, 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 when was this? In, when when were we referring to this? That was a I bomb. There was an email chain. I didn't hear about <laughs> it. I think I really think you're screwing with me right now. May I might I I might be Desi. No, I'm actually not. I. I I was told this, I might have that wrong. Since you don't know, I'm now questioning it myself. But this is what I have heard, and I, we will have to uh, confirm that, I suppose. But uh, that, as far as I know, that is going to be uh, the case here. The finals are going to be cast by some pro casters from Riot HQ. So We'll ask. I should totally ask them if they can help me out. But, you know, we're all past that. <laughs> this, that's like two weeks down the road. So let's, let's go past that, and we're into picks and bands. There's the Callista, Sejuani, and Cholgath, all getting taken away by Amazon Prime. Vi, Maokai, and Hecarim taken away by Amazon and Amazon. So they're still with the Vi and the Hecarim, but this time, instead of the Nar, they take away the Maokai. Yeah, a little bit of uh, respect finally being shown here and switching up those bands around. Uh, and you know, that Maokai did create a lot of plays. He, that twisted advance, I mean, the point and click CC just so strong to get right in the middle of the team fight, as hard engage as you can possibly find. So, respectfully banning that away to make sure they don't have that available uh, this game. Uh, gonna be a smart choice there, a, a very important adaptation. Yeah, and Tainzy picking up the saver back for his team. So, we saw it game one, we saw its power. We're gonna be seeing it again in game three. Tosh, on the other hand, gonna be picking up the Lucian again for himself. These are gonna be running the same composition. This is eerily similar. Yeah, it looks like both sides very confident with their picks, and we might see that cinch come out. I mean, we have we uh, haven't uh, seen it yet in it this banned. series, but that has been a pocket pick. It was banned game one. It was banned game one. So our guy Jason had the option last game. But he didn't go for it. Instead, he went for um, the wow, Jinx. No, not the Jinx. Yeah, it was the Jinx. He he was on the Jinx. Why Tile is the top lane here? He yeah. might whip out that Sims here. Uh, the hover being on uh, aggro now, Jason, makes me think that's not going to be the case though. Uh, as we do see, the Mundo is what's going to be locked in here in the top. Yeah. Oh, that's my phone. Give me a second. I'll be back. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I, I got this on lockdown. I will solo cast for you guys on stream and make sure you guys aren't abandoned here. I would never abandon you guys. You got my phone. That, that's on silence. <laughs> but it looks like we see, of course, the uh, very mannered team will hover here as the NAR is going to be hovered immediately afterwards here and is going to be locked in. The first game it wasn't banned is immediately going to be picked up yeah. in the top lane here as we see Ezreal locked in for another performance in the mid lane as well. I'm actually surprised that that Ezreal wasn't picked away or banned because that Ezreal truly shined in game two. Yeah, and this is, this is going to be really, really fun to see. Two games, two straight games, we saw Krapow have his Nar getting taken away, and now, well, banned away. Now he's gonna have, it's, now he's gonna have time to shine on that little prehistoric Yordle. It's gonna be a really, really intense fight. I believe last time the, t the top laner was Maokai, I believe. Um, no, it was. Yeah. No, yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't Maokai. It was yeah, Maokai. And, you know, I mean, with, the thing with, with, with Nar is, it sets up so it sets up the ultimate of Lucian and Ezreal so much better than the Maokai. You just get in, hit a nice uh, swipe, lock down two or three members, and it sets up 
the fight so well for your team. You have Tosh going in with the box. You'll have Llamas throwing out his ultimate and then a bit of extra damage. And then you have HGAL with the piercing light hitting every single member and then follow it up with the culling. It's going to be really insane. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to work around that Narbar, but uh, we want to definitely talk about the Rise lock-in here. Oh, I'm so excited to see the new Rise here coming out the in thing the mid lane is, to try and punish this Ezreal pick. Yeah, the problem is with the... Oh, wait a minute, that's the mid lane Rise. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I mean, who knows, we could see Mundo in the top lane, but I believe with that uh, Ignite on the Rise, that is going to be... Um, yeah, I, he should do fine against the Ezreal. It's gonna be a little bit difficult for him be, just because of the range um, that Ezreal has on him. If Ezreal plays around the Rise passive, he should be able to win almost all the trades. And Leech is just gonna have to wait until late game again. This is, again, a pretty late-game scaling team composition by Red Team. The mid-game is going to be pretty devastating from Amazon Prime. Um, Late-game is still going to be fairly strong with the NAR as well, so it's a little bit better uh, compared to last game. But, I don't know, when it comes to late-game, it's going to be really difficult to say who wins, because they scale so well. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing. It's, I think it's going to be critically about who gets ahead in the mid game and who can hit late game sooner here with their uh, builds with that gold advantage because, you know, leaving that Ezreal open and picking up Rise, clearly there was a strategy here on Red Side saying, okay, if he picks that Ezreal again, we're comfortable picking Rise into that and we know we can make stuff happen here. And I'm interested to see if that's going to mean a lot of gank focus from the mid lane. I'm not sure uh, that uh, Scion is going to be able to provide a lot of heavy pressure in that mid lane especially when Ezreal can just shift away but I mean if he does land if he gets a little aggressive on Rise trying to uh, get some poke onto him under turret perhaps Rise can uh, lock him down near his turret and then that can give enough time to Scion to come in and actually gank Ezreal effectively here uh, there's definitely I mean all we know for sure is there has to be a plan because that Ezreal if they don't have a plan it's already over if if that Ezreal can have a repeat performance of last game it's going to be devastating <laughs> and and we got to talk a little bit about the Scion versus uh, as a Scion jungle what what is this game what is this game? <laughs> Who are like, these people? <laughs> exactly. Like you have three, you have three viable top laners, and one of them's going mid, and one of them's going jungle. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, I mean, we do see Iron Sheep, of course, uh, somebody who loves those tanky junglers. Uh, Scion is one I haven't seen from him, but again, you know, to pick this out in game three of the semifinals, that's got to be something that he's practiced quite a bit and feels very comfortable on. And we're going to see, like you mentioned earlier, it's going to be a scaling team into the late game very heavily. And that Scion is going to take a little uh, extra longer to turn on. But we might see some interesting Scion ultimates uh, coming from base or from the complete opposite, opposite side of the map through river uh, to get some really long range ganks in. Uh, if this is a pocket pick coming out in game three, I wouldn't be surprised to see some cheeky plays like that. But it's all going to depend on what the uh lane how the lanes shake out who's going to be pushed in who's going to be froze we'll see how the game plays out here as we load into the game three There it is. We're in. It seems as though um, Amazon pays their uh, employees well because they're all loading in. They're all loading in really quickly. <laughs> you are seeing Nara actually opting to start with the Ruby Crystal in the top lane. Probably thinking there's not going to be too much kill pressure onto that Mundo, but that should signal that the gank pressure is going to be focused probably in mid and bottom uh, from that Nidalee. But we might actually see an uh, invade, level 1 invade here coming out from the red side. 
Nidalee is going to throw down a ward here. She will spot out uh, that a ward was thrown down mirroring that. And Thrush going to be able to throw down that ward in the bush before anything can be made of this. So just going to be some dance moves from Sivir. Yep, just going to show off her moves. Um, just show how well she can dance. <laughs> Nothing else right Unfortunately, there. Unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't spot out that all five members were there. So Nar not going to be able to... Uh, yeah. Invade for some deep wards. Oh, wait, he is actually, gonna peek around. So we will see them rotating back now, but it is too late yeah. to get those deep wards down. So I'm actually going to be pretty interested to see how the Scion jungle is going to work out. I can't say it's something I've seen very often. Um, I do know. I have heard that the clear speed. It's it's not the quickest, but it's not the slowest. You you clear fairly moderately. Um. And the path, you're like, when you, as you kill the jungle minions, it allows you kid. to stack up your soul furnace fairly quickly. Like, later on, you won't, you won't have as much health as a scion that was, that has been in lane. But your early and mid game, though, uh, it will, uh, give, it will have, you will have more health in the early and mid game when you compare it to a scion that hasn't been in lane. Especially uh, if the lane opponent would have been a Gnar, it he may just end up having more health overall. Gnar does have the advantage in just poking out whoever his lane opponent is in mini Gnar and then going in really hard when he's mega Gnar. It's going to be a really difficult lane for Utah as well, but it's still it's still he's still training actually pretty effectively with. The little Yordle. Crap file. Uh, starts with the Ruby Crystal, though. That's really interesting. Uh, I I kind of expected something uh, like the... Either a Longsword or a Doran's Blade. Um, you don't really... You don't really expect a lot of aggression coming out from Mundo against you. Meanwhile, in that bottom lane. Just yeah, a lot of aggression. Of yeah, the skill shots being thrown back and forth. Unfortunately, none of them really connecting here, so not too much action. A little bit of passive poke here and there from both sides, though. So they are going to be chugging through those pots here momentarily, um, just to get that a little bit of sustain throughout the lane. But so far, fairly even lane here. Uh, CS is actually uh, a 100 percent match there, and Rise seems to be actually uh, turning on uh, that uh, passive right at the key time there. Ezreal's so far not playing around that, and we're gonna need to see him uh, give some respect to that because Rise certainly is a lot more uh, less of a threat when he doesn't have that passive active, but when he does, he is way more of a threat than he ever was now. So, gonna have to start playing around that passive, but I'm just not sure uh, that there's been enough time with this new uh, rework to Rise out to sort of get used to that. Yeah, that definitely. Flow of the lane. Yeah, definitely. And so far, right now, I love Llama's picking up an. A fairly small CS lead, only about five up right now, close to a wave right there. And in the top lane, that's a pretty moderate CS lead for Crap Pile. About two waves in his favor. He's, you tell, not having the best of times. Hasn't really used any of his potions just yet, just yet. So that kind of just makes me think that he's just not farming that well, just due to his own. Uh, Mechanical issues in that mid lane, though. I love Lama. Yeah, we saw we saw the flash forward all in to throw down the ignite. It's uh, gonna be Ezreal making it out with his life thanks to the arcane shift, but uh, he will be going back in time to get that uh, tier picked up. So he did actually uh, all in a little bit. Oh, here's the gang. There. Iron sheep looking for yeah, something. Here comes that Sion, he's actually going to miss that first shot here, but he should be able to walk in on Tosh. Tosh is going to try to sidestep it as best he can, but walks back into it in the end. Going to force the deforce the flash here, and that shield actually will not be enough to save him from the Sivir. The last auto is going to pick him up here, and that will be first blood onto Sivir in the bot lane. Yeah, that was just really well played by Amazon Amazons right there. The initial roar did miss, didn't find each gal, but... Setting up the uh, Q in a, in a way that Tosh had to walk into it. There's really no way of him escaping that. It was really nicely uh, played by them. Crap ball. Tango the towers in the top lane, though. Yeah, tanked up so Ooh. much damage from that turret before Nidalee could even engage because Mundo had dodged out the mark as he does again here. 
So that's going to be a lot of damage just forcing themselves to disengage there for nothing in that top lane. So well played by the Mundo to dodge that out and hug that turret nice and close. <laughs> and the Death Sentence just out of range there. Good attempt over the wall, but unfortunately not going to connect there. Yeah, and... I, I, they really could have played that a lot better in the top lane. Once the initial... Uh, spear from Nidalee didn't connect. They should have just backed off because they don't really, they don't have any lockdown until uh, Crowd Pile is in Meganar, and he was he wasn't really that close to hitting that point. Their best chance to even get something would have been to wait until he is Meganar, and even then, oh, the death sense in the bottom lane though. Yeah, gonna be a blind hook through the bush there and that's a lot of damage coming out the shield does block out a good chunk of it but already so low are both of the ad carries that any sort of engagement is a huge risk in this bottom lane right now Sivir gonna be looking to throw that spell shield up when needed so she's actually gonna dance around trying to bait it out to get that mana back but uh gonna just rotate over to throw some wards down <laughs> actually gonna double ward that river but unfortunately but, yeah uh, hashtag communication <laughs> yeah, a little bit of the game three jitters uh, showing out right now. I, it, wait, what? Okay. And then the hook going in the wrong um, direction again. Uh, yeah, so definitely some game three jitters right now. They like the thing is Amazon Prime. They were in the finals last year in after hours gaming league turn, League of Legends tournament. So they kind of have like like uh, they're kind of obligated to make it back to the finals. Because I believe they got 3-0 sweeped by Microsoft 1 last year. And oh man, Leech getting engaged on. Yeah, there's the pounce from Italy with that markup. But there's the rise damage when he has his passive up. He almost took down the Nibbly in a 2v1 situation. That's the threat new rise can bring. But he does go down. Nibbly makes it out by the skin of her teeth with just enough HP to get out alive. So that's going to be a kill onto her. Evening up that score right now. We see the wet noodle fast in, uh, fight in the top lane. Yeah. Gonna be lowering their hit points, but Mundo with that ultimate available, gonna be uh, no real kill pressure here in the top lane anytime soon. Yeah, and it, when Yatal has his ultimate up, there's gonna be. There's not. I don't expect a kill to be going down. Kropal can effectively push out the Mundo with the boomerang, but not if he goes and engages like that, taking up a tower shot. Gonna sidestep that briefcase. Yeah, but that's actually not oh, be enough in the end. It looks like one more briefcase should do oh. it, but he's gonna have the minions there in time. Good guy, hero minions there in time to dissuade Mundo from following it up. Unfortunately, what Mundo, what is with only the ghost, was not able to flash into a reposition there, so he will make it out with his life. Yeah, well, I wonder what those briefcases are made of for them to do that much damage. <laughs> it's like Italian leather. <laughs> well, it might be more what's uh, concealed within the briefcase. Oh, Who knows? It, it's, I, it's, I know I certainly don't want to find out. <laughs> it, 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 the briefcase itself is made of Italian leather, but inside is the cow. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, man. But then, the, the tears on both of those mid laners, they're just going to be stacking those up. Um, Rise is at 133. Ezreal at 219, so a bit of an advantage for him. And there's the ultimate. There's They're gonna... the ultimate. Point blank in the spot, and he's not going to be being able to make it out because there's going to be the teleport in. Mundo going to give him the business to prevent him from getting on there. Mundo actually wants to tank up the dirt. He will throw down his ultimate. The fadeaway, Coley, not going to be enough. Just barely making out with enough health is Mundo. Beautiful juggle on the turret aggro there to keep Mundo alive. Oh, fantastic play. Nope. Well earned kills in the bottom. So, he was so close to dying right there. I, I believe he like he hit underneath. He was at under 100 health when that last turret hit um, got him. So really playing with fire right there. But that was a really nice teleport. He's gonna be able to. This kid, the team is really gonna be able to get this dragon and. Crap on the top lane will be able to trade for that tower. So it, it's still not completely favorable, but they do get something out of it. Yeah, and you know, in the mid lane, while all that action was going down, bot, there was a solo kill onto Ezreal. So Rise now picking up a kill for himself as well. So much action during that engagement here. 
And of course, with that first dragon uh, going down on uh, the left side here, hold that thought though, this trap pile in the top lane. So much damage out on him, gonna be forced to throw that Gnar out to try and get away. Mundo definitely still wants it, but the rest of his members not coming with him. He thinks he can solo this Gnar right now. I'm inclined to believe him, though. Uh, that Gnar taking so much damage already. Mundo not caring at all about the damage Gnar puts out in reply. He's gonna get the solo kill. Those minions not gonna be enough this time to dissuade, but Dio Diesel coming in will be enough to dissuade him from following it up there. Yeah. There is the mark. Will Nidalee go in? She does! There's the pound. So much damage onto this Mundo. She will get him one last pound. There it is. Finally, Mundo does fall in the top yeah. lane. I feel as though crap pile, that, that was just a really big elaborate bait. Getting that low <laughs> and without dying. I mean, he did miss that pretty heavily. He could have just backed off and waited for the minions to pound. He would have gotten the double pound. It's been effectively home free. I don't think he really paid attention to that. So that's what kind of makes me think that it was just an elaborate ruse. Yeah, certainly could be the case here as we see uh, the action going down in bot lane. Tosh already at half health now after that first exchange, so gonna have to play a little bit safer there. Uh, that Sivir with two kills already, the BF Sword and Pickaxe oh, man. completed. Frozen so Mallet. much damage available. Frozen Mallet on Crab Pile. That's a, that's a pretty interesting first item. Um, I'm not gonna. It's not necessarily bad. It does make uh, being in Minionar form less punishing, as opposed to being in Minionar form, because like you, you're not, you're not, oh, like you're not effectively useless in Minionar form. You have your yes. auto attacks to continue dealing damage instead of every third attack you do uh, damage. You'll have a, you'll have the slows from your um, regular auto attacks. Yeah, you know what I see for your team. But being being that was your first item, uh, it may come back to hurt him later because he just doesn't have a lot of tankiness. He will get some health from the frozen mallet though. So yeah, you know when we not... see that first first item frozen mallet on the Nar, that's typically a sign that Nar is going to be looking to split push all throughout the mid game here. So we might see some objectives being seeded a little bit by this blue side. Uh, in lieu of trying to trade yeah. and make it to oh, later man, game five when that Ezreal turns on, but goodness gracious, the damage! Wow, absolutely burst out there. And it looks like I mean Ezreal certainly with those two assists has been involved in a lot of kills this game thus far. But it looks like Nidalee is the one who's going to look to turn on early as she already has the components for that Rod of Ages available to herself. So she's going to be looking to pick that up on her next back and get that uh, stack in here. Yeah, no assistance from anyone to the bottom lane. HGAO and Tosh not really having the best of times right now. And so far, this game is bit in favor of Amazon Prime. They do have that mid lane and top lane tower down into their favor. And so far, Dowd is a All of his aggression has really been in that mid lane, all of his kills really have been in the uh, mid lane. They, you got that one kill onto Yatel, but that was because he was just overextending. All the ganks have been uh, focused towards I Love Llamas, and he's not got any of them. He's only really got an assist, and if he can't get rolling for this mid game, it's going to be pretty difficult for his team because you'll have two huge front lines in the form of Sion and Mundo that both him and HK are going to have to deal with. HK really hasn't been able to get traction, gain any traction in the bottom lane, so it's going to rely a lot on to I Love Llamas to do some of this consistent damage, and he really is not going to be able to if he doesn't get any gold. Oh. So look. many times we've seen in these past few games that ultimate thrown out to try and steal the blue buff. They are... Uh, warding it constantly to make sure they have vision on it when it's available, but he just hasn't been able to time that perfectly just yet. Uh, we might see later on uh, him actually able to steal one of the way effectively here, but you know, at that point in the game, it's probably not going to matter. Rise, only one who's really going to need that mana, and he's going to have so much mana built at that point that uh, it's not really going to matter. Once that Rod of Ages gets stacked, once that tier gets stacked, he's going to absolutely become a nightmare. So they are on a timer here a bit for the blue side here, trying to at least shut down or slow down that rise as much as possible. We'll see if they're able to do so. Yeah, both of them. Trinity Force is completed now for yeah. Ezreal. There it is. Last game he went for the Mana Moon. It's his first time in this game. It's the Trinity Force. So, oh man, that was just really poor timing by Tosh. Yeah, following up that hook right as... Uh, 
to be an ultimate cannon from Sion. That's actually going to be a party here in the bottom lane as both the top lane are self ordered down as well. Nara is going to, or excuse me, Mundo is going to be caught out by the Nara, but it's Mundo, so who cares? Is the ultimate from Ezreal going to be missing there? Mundo turning on that ultimate, just running into the team, giving people the business as much as he can, trying to keep that uh, uh, Lucian engaged here, and he effectively does so, and that will be the Lucian going down to the server, but now here's Ezreal getting one kill on the Mundo. There's another kill, this one on the crap pile, getting that rise down. No that, that was, two for one. That was so similar uh, to TSM versus EDG, I believe. Where Dyrus took the lantern meant for Wild Turtle, and then he left Wild Turtle to die. <laughs> Crap Pile took the lantern that H Cow was about to take, and he left H Cow to die right there. That was Ezreal just taking a kill onto Argonaut Jason underneath the tower, and they do it take the dragon for themselves as well. Yeah, speaking of uh, plays reminiscent of pro games, Ezreal. Uh, jumping behind a turret and actually successfully though getting the last kill that they wanted uh, and it looks like they're actually going to be able to get this bot lane turret as well so now three turrets to nothing that global gold largely coming from this turret disparity all of the outer ring turrets are now gone we might look to see some of those wards already starting to creep into the jungle and with that there's going to be a lot of uh, vision control losing out for the blue side. Yeah, but with that so threat, far. With that nidalee, they can certainly capitalize on picks as, if that vision starts to yeah. get too deep. And so far, Amazon Prime have yet to pick up any sweepers besides Tosh right now. And you can already see on the side of Amazon Amazon, they have two other members, both the Sun and the Rise have wards in their inventory and you also have a couple of that with the fact that the pink ward uh trinket has been picked up by leech they can clear out vision they'll have the scrying orb to uh, spot out any areas safely and they'll be able to put down vision as well they are just playing the map so nicely and this is just not what amazon prime are doing they're relying completely on getting picks on what they can actually see instead of forcing the vision and being being fairly strong right now they have the opportunities to put themselves into the enemy jungle and put down the vision but they aren't doing that and i love llamas being really aggressive may have been yeah, caught out oh wait what? unfortunately that's gonna be the spell shield yeah wait i don't even see how that kill went down onto ah. the janna uh, there uh, I, I mean, I just don't know. There was no ignite available. Tosh gonna be caught out here by the drawn area though, and he's gonna go down. So there's an immediate reply here. And oh no, the pounce! Dio Diesel not gonna make it over the wall. He will make it a second time, but there's the boomerang coming into effect there, getting that middle cleaned up. Oh, there's the punch! Going back to deep. Here's I Love Llamas to every ult, but not going to be enough, just barely making it out with blinking red health bars is that silver, so he will go down as well. Overall, a 3 for 1 now, as Krapile trying to make something forward in the top lane with this uh, inner turret, and I think he will be able to do so, but that's a big Janna shield. Yeah, Tansy can't really do anything to stop this from happening. Delayed a little bit longer, sure. Stop it? Not at all. And I love Llamas, I don't know what he was thinking right there. He tried so hard to get a kill onto Argonaut Jason, but the best he could have done was go one for one because you use both of your escapes to get that kill and the rest of the uh, Amazon team was right there to stop him. He didn't even get the kill, which is really unfortunate for him. So, a bit of poor planning on his part. Yeah, absolutely. Now we see... Uh, both those raw of ages picked up for the respective members on the two teams here, so those will begin stacking here as the tiers uh, are getting close to being stacked as well. Uh, you see both the top lane is starting to come down to this mid lane, but they're going to tussle along the way. Actually, Nar going to be looking to be caught out a bit. Mundo going to give him those briefcases. Uh, he's actually yeah. going to go in. He doesn't have the team to follow up with him, though. And that's gonna be him going down. Now the red side is gonna turn and just take this fight immediately. There's the Janna ultimate trying to zone out some of these players here. And Silver actually will go down in the back line to that Ezreal. The threat will follow 4v3 right now. And caught in between a rock and a hard place is that Lucian as he actually will get the kill though under that rise. 
Mundo has to be careful. He doesn't have as much regen at this point. And Lucian and Italy are gonna make it out of here with their lives intact, actually. Might even pick up a kill on this side. So flash forward on Scion to try and get that kill on the Middle East. Not gonna be enough, but the passive form of Scion, the pursuit, gonna be enough to get Lucian on the backside. There's another kill on the Janna. Yeah, Poor Janna, just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That 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 huge escapade was just set up by the fact that Krapal got caught out by the entirety of Amazon. There was no one there to back him up. But then they continued to try and fight the 4v5 as though they were expecting to win that, which was strange, to say the least. And there wasn't a huge uh, pick there to start off a follow-up engagement, so unfortunately, not the best sort of circumstances here, but when we look at the sports overall, the members we talked about going into this game needing to turn on that Nidalee and that uh, Ezreal, they're certainly turning on right now. Uh, that Nidalee, 5, 1, and 2. The Ezreal, 5, 2, and 3. Ezreal does have the Merman as transformed. Nidalee does have almost all of the raw Vega stacks, only uh, six more stacks to go. So at this point in the game, there's certainly hitting power spikes right now. So if there's going to be anything that's uh, happening, now is the time to team fight for them. Yeah, definitely. Before they yeah. hit the absurdity of the late game with that rise and with that Mundo on the opposing forces. Yeah, it, it's going to be really difficult for them to fight them in the late game. Dragging up in 20 seconds, this could be the time where Amazon, Amazon, not, well, put themselves in the lead. They are still down in gold when you compare the two teams. Um, but they have been fighting really effectively against them. And that's all of Llamas. Just dashing away. Oh, it's got actually locked down. And this is yeah, the fight. There's a room coming from the side, but it's not enough. They will flash over to, uh, excuse me, Arcane shift over to finish up the kill on the rise. And that will be Mundo going down as well. All of a sudden, two members evaporating from this red side. That's going to be possibly the mid lane inner turret going down before the dragon goes down as well. Yeah, and the thing is, Leech just went off to the sidelines with no one there to back him up. I believe... Tains was there uh, to help him, but they know he doesn't care. Ezreal doesn't care. He can just keep diving in, knowing that the room prison is down. There's nothing there to lock him up from going in onto that rise. And he really yeah. stayed with the team. Mundo kind of gave up his life to keep him alive, but they both ended up dying. Yeah, Ezreal channeling a bit of a honey badger there. Just going right on in once he saw that room prison was down. And, you know, they uh, re recognizing that the dragon is going down, trying to create pressure in this mid lane, but with all five members still up there, just simply not able to. And actually, that's the flash hook. It's going to land on the side. I'm not the key target there. He's just going to hold it as soon as he saw that toss was going as well. Here's the team fight breaking oh. up. Beautiful Nar on the four people, though. Mundo going to be saved by the Jana ultimate, but Sion going down in the end. The steam fight actually continues though. Scion trying to chase down HCal again. He's not going to be able to do so this time. And that's going to be just the Scion going down for nothing here. As Nidalee looks to continue the poke as they siege. I can't emphasize even, enough how even strong after, the Nar ultimate was. Even after the four man Nar ultimate, they're not even able to get anything. That is how strong Amazon Prime are right now. They can't even hope to fight and Argonaut Jason he's trying to survive sidestepping the spear and he's gonna be able to walk away with his life still intact but they yeah, lose another inner in, they lose another inner tower now all the inner towers are down 24 and a half minutes into this game and yeah, an Amazon and Amazon gold, have yet to get on that board absolutely an 8k gold lead at this point in the game largely stemming only from those towers. All that global gold making this a very lopsided game despite the kills still being relatively even here. Uh, man, I just, it's so such a dominant performance here. Once they uh, got a bit of a lead, they certainly have been capitalizing on it in this team fight. And they're actually going to try and get this middle lane turret, but they're gonna be defended again. All these turrets being denied, the outer turrets protected. I, I can't believe we're at this stage in the game and all the outer turrets still remain for one of these teams. Yeah, and the piece is, it's so effective. Deny them the towers and then you deny them their ramp. That's the ultimate going to be used by Asana and the engage is starting. 
That's right, Tosh is locked down here, but that's not going to mean too much here as the Relentless Pursuit is leaving in these damages, and again, the damage from that Nidalee getting those spears onto them, that's going to be a double kill, both of them going down now. Nidalee, just such a nightmare at this point in the game, with that Ludo and Zekko completed, with that Rod fully stacked at this point in the game. So much damage coming out from those spears, reminiscent of old school Nidalee here that we used to see in the mid lane. And now they're playing largely a game of just trying to keep them off of their inhibitor turrets here, trying to wave through. Yeah. They do have that Sivir still up, so she should be able to hold out for a little while. And that's the problem, they can't effectively push into this, uh, into the base because of the Sivir and because of the Sion. But the damage that just came out from Ezreal right there is absolutely insane. What is that damage from the so True Shot Barrage? Yeah, oh man. Almost enough to finish off Sivir without even needing to be in range for a follow up rise. Uh, trying to do his best to AoE out this wave, but he's not really uh, able to do so here. Needs that help from Mundo. So far, they have defended their base, but gosh, that Nidalee and that uh, uh, Ezreal, again, turning on in this point in the game, doing so much damage. And they're not able to do that toppling tower. It's so close to dying, but hopefully, I, hopefully, well, maybe it does regen. So it'll be back up to about half health. By the time they get around to it. Um, yeah, it seems I like try. they were opting to go back, trying to invest that gold lead. They have cement themselves for a possible team fight here at Baron. As we saw the pings coming out around the pit, it looks like they're going to clean up their buffs first and then look to try and uh, possibly bait a fight or just snatch, snatch up this Baron before it can be contested here. And then look to finish off that push into the base and actually finally crash the, uh, crack the base, rather. Yeah. And as we continue into this game, 30 minutes closing up. Dragon number four of the game will be up in one minute and 40 seconds. It's going to be so key for both these teams to get that buff. Not, it's going to be key for Amazon Prime to get it so they can have a little bit extra mobility to deal with the on the hunt and righteous glory combination of Amazon Amazon but if Amazon Amazon take uh, get it then they can deny them that they can deny the extra mobility yeah absolutely and that's that's largely creating a no-win situation for this Amazon team because as we see the members grouping around that Baron again if they do often try and go for that dragon for uh, a bit of a denial there they might end up just trading that and they do see the Spine Orb coming out they will see that this Baron has been set off they have to contest this here yeah it's at the half health right down. now here's the yeah, fight they're oh. taking, taking a long lantern right in there Janna is going to provide a lot of disengage there, so she will be able to allow her team time to reposition, but they're actually not getting much off of that repositioning. Crap Final's going back in, he does miss the Gnar onto the Sivir, so they will make it out alive, but that is Rise already going down, it's already become a 3v5. There's the ride again for Tosh, and the last Mystic Shot gonna get him, and that's two members down. Now that could be an uncontestable Baron should they choose to fall back to it after they try and siege up this mid lane. Yeah, they're just going to continue trying to push this mid lane out. They don't even want the Baron. Argonaut Jason so low. He's going to get 1v1. There it is, each guy. So, the flash heal going to be enough to give him the double kill. An extended ace here uh, onto this. Or almost, excuse me, an extended ace. Of course, Iron Sheep still surviving. He's and now, the tanky man that he is, but now all the objectives available, two members are going to be down for a long time still. So it looks like they're going to opt to take the safer dragon, knowing that they have plenty of vision around Baron. Actually, just going to recall here, leave that to Ezreal yeah. uh, and Nidalee. Yeah, we'll just be able to take that. And now, with the third dragon, they could just effectively head over to Baron right now. Mid lane is open, they're going to have to deal with that. If it was bottom lane, it would have been a little bit easier for Amazon Prime to work around the minion lead because since the mid lane is pushing, they can keep the super minions effectively at the midway point and they'll have easy access to the river for um, a Baron contestion. Um, if it had been bottom lane, then it would have been a little more difficult. They would have had to play around the teleport for Yiddle and Crop Pile. But it's still going to be another um threat 
for Amazon Amazon to watch out for um, in the upcoming moments. 30 minutes in, and Baron again started up by Amazon Prime. Yeah, this Amazon, looks like Amazon, it's not Amazon. Be able to be stopped here. Yeah, Amazon, Amazon. It's they have to know that it's cool. happening. They have to know it was happening, but they just can't stop it. Yeah, unfortunately, just not gonna be oh, able to get oh, there. Oh, wait, here like, it is. Yeah, they didn't realize it was already long down, and that's gonna be the Mundo gonna be taken down there. And actually, Janet as well taken down on the backside by that Ezreal. And now two members down, Baron up. This is gonna be a hard defense here. From this red side here, Amazon really put on the back foot right now. Thresh going way far deep just to get already huge forward wards in the base. And with those minions, they're going to look to just bring them up top lane. Let the uh, super minions in mid lane do their job on their own. And just create a huge siege here on the top lane to try and get a second inhibitor down. Yeah, and I don't, they're not going to be able to stop this from happening. Jenna and Mundo are back up for that. Tower is already low to begin with. This is gonna go down. The inhibitor should be going down as well. And now it's just crap pile. He, he doesn't so have much damage on the Janna. Yeah. He will not go down to the ultimate, but that's gonna be the inhibitor down. And now they're moving on to these Nexus turrets here. And they should be able so to take much damage again from Ezreal on the server. He just keeps throwing his combo and somebody has to run back to town. Leech going in. He did get that passive up. He does. He has turned on with Orion, so he does get the kill. But that's two for one, or two me, one for one right now. Four members still up here for those super minions being the fifth man right now. That's so much damage coming out from those barren up super minions. H Gal gonna barely survive with that last dash. And now that's gotta be the game here. Too many minions in the base at this point. Too few members of Amazon alive. And trying to be a hero is <laughs> the server here. But I'm not sure she's gonna be able to do that. She does go down. Janet goes down as well. And finally, that is the ace to finish it out. And there is the game going over to Amazon Prime, securing their slot in the finals. Yeah, and this is where they, they really showed up this game. Like, first game, it was it was pretty iffy. It didn't look as though they were really playing as a team in the first game. But then, they started working out the kinks. In the second game, it was pretty even, and they managed to win. And this third game, they snowballed that uh, their laning phase lead into just a mid-game and late-game like dominance. They, it, they were just so strong um, throughout all parts of this game. There was a bit of time where... They weren't able to get a lead. I believe both of the teams were actually even at 11 kills at one point. I'm not entirely sure about that. Yeah. But, yeah. And then they just picked up consecutive kills over and over again while they just did not drop any. And, you know, Ezreal almost double the damage of anyone on the opposing team. That is absolutely absurd. So that... Going into the finals, whoever wins the match coming up here uh, in a half hour, which we will be casting, so stay tuned. Plug, plug, plug. Oh, God. Uh, but they're definitely going to be taking note of this Ezreal, and they're going to absolutely have to either pick or ban this Ezreal out. These past two games, Ezreal showed up and... I. Yeah, I don't want to say carried the team because the rest of the team carries their own weight as well. But if they weren't, he would have carried the team. He was absolutely insane this game. So yeah. that Ezreal is going to have to be respected going into these finals. Yeah. So that's going to be the end of this series between Amazon Prime and Amazon Amazon. Hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed the casting. Remember, you can always follow us on Twitter. My Twitter is at DesiFreshCaster. And, but you know. can't follow me on Twitter, so follow me on YouTube. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button or just stay tuned in. Again, for the live viewers, we will be casting, uh, co-casting the uh, next game here at 4 o'clock uh, Pacific time, so a half hour from wherever your local time is right now. And that will be between Microsoft One and Capital One Blue, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this series, and we will see you guys next time.